Hello everyone, welcome to my movie journal. Today I'm going to show you the seven movies that I recently purchased in the Arrow pre-Christmas sale. Well, it was a pretty good sale. They were, the ones I got at least were 70% off. All seven of these movies, I guess you could call them overlooked, if not obscure, but they're all made by significant directors. First up is from 1949, Mrs. Mano, directed by Henri George Clouseau, who is famous for the movies subsequent to this film in the 1950s, Wages of Fear and Diabolique. Both are on the Criterion Channel and, and physical release. It's based on a 1731 novel called Mano Lescaux. And I, I read this novel a few years ago. I took a online Coursera course in literature. The, the prof Professor Weinberg from Brown University, and he was just brilliant, and especially in this, uh, on this novel that this film is based on. Um, it's a surprisingly entertaining novel. It's one of the oldest novels I've ever read, but I highly recommend it. It's really entertaining and really wild. Uh, but Clouseau, uh, updates it to post-World War II diaspora, people without a country, people not knowing where to go. Um, and although I, 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 I call these films overlooked, uh, this did wasn't overlooked evidently in 1949 because it won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. There's The supplements include a 1970 archival documentary with Clouseau himself in which he discusses his love of literature and his view of literary adaptations. There's also a video, what's called a video appreciation, but critic Jeff Andrews called Woman in the Dunes. Now in the novel, the, this doomed couple traveled to New Orleans, from France to New Orleans. In the movie, evidently, they go to the uh, Middle East and end up in the Middle East desert. Each of the films includes a booklet. <clears throat> this is the photo from the from the cover of the Blu-ray. And this one's not very extensive, but they include different pictures from the film. Uh, there's only one essay in this booklet, and it's called Misogyny and a More Foo in the Gigantic Rat Race of the Liberation. Next up is another French film from 1953, and this is The Love of a Woman. It's directed by Jean Grimian, or Greenman, I think it is. This is his last movie. Uh, I've never seen any of his movies, although uh, Criterion did um, release a, a clip set a few years ago with three of his films that are, can, can also be seen on the Criterion channel today. All right, here's some more French names. The stars are Micheline Presle. I, I'm not P-R-E-S-L-E. I looked that one, I, I listened to it, but I can't remember how they pronounced it. <laughs> Messino Girardi is the male star, and he's familiar to me from Luciano Visconti's adaptation of uh, The Postman Only Rings, Always Rings Twice which Visconti called a sessioni. The blurb describes this movie, sad, beautiful, romantic masterpiece, let's hope so. And there is a feature length documentary in the supplements uh, from 1969. I believe Grimion had, had passed away and there are many luminary, film luminaries in this documentary, including Rene Claire and the two stars of this movie as well. Also a booklet, the same design cover art. Uh, this is another one that doesn't include a whole lot of, uh, of uh, uh, features, but it does include a, an essay that's titled The Love of a Woman. Let's move on to 1961, and this film is entitled Spotlight on a Murderer, directed by Georges Franju. And I, he is a director I do know. 
from Judex and Eyes Without a Face. Very strange, offbeat movies. And uh, the screenplay was written, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I don't know why I'm gonna even attempt these names, Pierre Ballou and Tomas Narsajak. Now they, they wrote the screenplay for this, but they were mostly novelists and they wrote the novels that the aforementioned Diabolique and also Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo were based on. And I think one of their other novels was the basis for The Bridge Over the River Kwai. This blurb gives a description as a delightful, playful romp through Agatha Christie territory. Sounds pretty good to me. And it's, it sounds like it might make an interesting pairing with the, with the recent uh, Knives Out. And the supplements a vintage featurette with Franju and the actors. The booklet that comes with this is a little bit, a little bit thicker. It still includes uh, pictures and and, uh, and I guess this is uh, the main actress. And um, it, in, it includes two essays by two of my favorite movie critics. One is by Chris Fujiwara from 2017. And then there's a 1967 essay by Raymond Dergnat. Next up, we go to Italy. The year is 1961. The movie is The Assassin. This is directed by Elio Petri. It's his first movie. He too becomes more well known for a couple of Subsequent movies, Investigation of a Citizen Above Suspicion, and The Tenth Victim, which starred Marcello Mastriani and I believe Ursula Andres. Marcello Mastriani is the star of this movie as well. And this came out within a couple months of La Dolce Vita in 1961. And uh, the year, the movie, that Marcello Mastriani became a huge star, an international star. It's described as a Kafkaesque complete police investigation of a murder. And um, the supplements include uh, something that sounds very interesting. Tonino Guerra, a poet in the movies. Guerra was the screenwriter of this film, and he was uh, worked on screenplays throughout uh, this era in Italian cinema with many of the great directors. The booklet, The Assassin, uh, is, uh, has a number of uh, interesting um, essays. One is by Camilla Zamboni, who's an expert on Italian cinema. There's an essay by Petri himself from 1957 called, entitled, Italian Cinema, A Cra Castrated Elephant. I don't know what he means by that, but I'm anxious to find out. He, he wrote screenplays, this is 1961, but he was writing screenplays throughout the 1950s. He was also a film critic. <clears throat> Next up, we go to 1981, and this is Three Brothers. And this is directed by Francesco Rossi, who has become one of my favorite directors in recent months. Criterion recently released Christ Stopped at Eboli from 1979. This, that was the previous movie to this movie, Three Brothers. Both of these played in first run art film theaters and I saw them both then and not afterwards. I don't think either of them ever received any kind of um, fiscal release in the U.S., at least not in Blu-ray or DVD. Uh, Christ stopped at Evely, and, and this film, as I recall it, it's been a long time, are more intimate dramas compared to the kind of docudramas that Rossi became famous for in uh, Salvatore Giuliani and uh, Hands Across, Hands Over the City, which starred Rod Steiger, both of which are available on the Criterion Channel. In the supplements, uh, we get an interview with Rosie from 1987 in London at the National Film Theater. 
I've seen some interviews of Bruce Lee, and he's a great interview, very erudite man. He loves to talk about his movies and other movies. This is a more extensive booklet. Uh, it includes a written um, introduction um, by Rossi himself, two, three brothers. It includes a essay by Millicent Marcus. This is another good title. Family as, as Political Allegory in Three Brothers. There's also an extended print interview with Rossi by uh, Michael Cement. Cement. Also looks very interesting. Let's go up to let's go up to the 21st century and uh, go to South Korea. And this is a double feature by um, the director Hong Sang Soo, who is one of my favorite contemporary directors. He is part of the South Korean New Wave, um, but he's not really a part of it in the sense that he goes off on his own path. The other directors that have found great successes, Parasite obviously winning the Academy Award, uh, would draw on many different, mixing many different genres up so that they would have both a, a big commercial as well as an artistic success. Hong Sang Su's films are very intimate He's often compared to Eric Gromer, the French director. Uh, and I can see some of these comparisons. He focuses in on younger people and their problems with love and career. There's a lot of drinking in Hong Sang Soo's movies. Uh, they're seen by Hong as a kind of liberating force for the repressiveness of emotions and this is what he sees in his society. I've never seen Tale of Cinema. I have seen um, Woman is a Future Man a few times. Uh, Tale of Cinema, I don't believe, was ever released in the U.S. on the physical media. Uh, I, it's probably not, I, I, Woman is a Future Man is probably not a good introduction to Romer. I would, I mean, to um, Hong. I, I would say the best one would probably be uh, uh, Woman on the Beach, which is somewhere in the mid mid. Uh, 20 teens, also uh, more recent Hotel by the River, and also uh, right now Rolling Then, which might be a little bit uh, complex in its structure. Hong likes to play around with time, and he sort of has, he sort of redoes the, he, he, the first half of the movie, uh, or the second half of the movie is sort of a uh, remake of the first half with, with significant differences in uh, right now Rolling Then. Woman on the Beach, I think, if you've never seen a Hong Sang Soo movie, I, I would, that would be my uh, recommendation. I believe that is on DVD or Blu-ray or perhaps DVD. In the supplements, Tony Raines gives a uh, inter introduction to both of these films, and um, Martin Scorsese interviews Woman as the Future of Man. And then there's also two doc documentaries where the cast are uh, are uh, interviewed and a booklet very small booklet here um, and but they have a, there's one essay and it's uh, by Michael Sosinski and another uh, rather puzzling title called men behaving cadly not badly but cadly <laughs> sounds pretty interesting okay that's it for my arrow uh, Paul, um, if you've participated in the sale, uh, I'd like to know what uh, films uh, you, you purchased. If you know about any of these films, please leave a comment. Otherwise, until we meet again.